If you ever searched for React Engine questions to prepare, you probably found a lot of junior level questions. Here I prepared for you 20 questions, which are going more in a senior direction, because they are more general. Let's have a look. What is lifting state up in React? This is actually an easy question, but it is tricky to understand, because lifting state up is not an extremely popular term. The idea here is when we have several components, which are using the same state, we want to put it in a single place. And we are lifting our state up, which means we are moving it from children to a single parent. And then we store that state there in a single place, where we are modifying it, and all children are typically dumb, and they simply call a callback from our parent. Then parent can update the state on its own. What is React context? Inside React, we don't have a possibility, like in Angular, to create a shareable service to share either some data or some functions. We can do that by using React context, so we're wrapping the whole project with the provider. And this provider gives us access to some functions and properties. It allows us to access this context from any level in any component. It is not as easy to use as Angular services, for example, but this is what we are getting in React. So if you want to share your state not just between parent and child, but between different levels of components, then React context is a way to go. What are different ways to add CSS to your application? And inside React we don't have some standard way, there are lots of them. For example, you can simply import a CSS file inside your build and use global CSS classes. This is probably the most popular variant. You can also provide styles in line as an object. We can also install some library like Tailwind and simply use classes from it. We can also import our CSS as modules and then apply these unique classes inside our component. And it is also possible to use libraries like CSS in JS, where we are writing our CSS as objects in the JavaScript. What is Hot Module Replacement or HMR? It is a possibility to update the state and markup that you see on the screen of your application without reloading the page. And it is an extremely useful functionality when you are writing code in your application, because you don't really want to lose your state after every single change. When your application is fully reloaded, you are fetching API again, and you need to click several links to get to the same state, it is not fun. Hot Mode Reload solves this problem by directly replacing the module that we changed. So when you change your component, Webpack compiles just that module and does not reload the whole application. And the updated module is swapped without refreshing a page. What is the use of Parcel, Vite or Webpack? Basically all these three tools are designed to transpile your code and build your application. For example, you can transpile your TS6 code to plain JavaScript of specific version that you want. Additionally for that, you are getting a lot of other tools like a web server, CSS processor and much more. And obviously they are extremely configurable to serve everyone's needs. And from this list, I myself prefer Vite as the fastest solution possible. How does Create React App work? Here we obviously need to tell how it works, but we also must mention from the beginning that it is kind of in obsolete deprecated mode. It is not written there, but there are no new features here and it is not recommended to use Create React App anymore. To generate React projects we typically use Vite. As the question was about Create React App, this is a tool which allows you to generate a React project with all needed files and a web server that you can start and it just works out of the box. As it is not being supported, Vite does exactly the same, but you can generate not only React there, but also React with TypeScript or a lot of other different projects. Additionally to that, Vite is extremely fast for development. What is tree shaking? It is a possibility in build tools like for example React to remove unused code from our bundle. Essentially you can import the whole library but just use a single function. Then it doesn't make sense to pack the whole library in the output bundle. We want to keep our bundle as small as possible. 
Treshaken does exactly that, and it will keep just a single function from that library and won't import the whole library. And from our side we don't even need to do anything, it will just do it out of the box if Treshaken is possible for this specific library. What is the difference between dev dependency and dependency? This question is about package JSON because we have two sections there. We can install packages as our dependency or as our dev dependency. Our dependency is exactly that, it is a dependency of our project. Our dev dependency is a dependency which we plan to use only for development. All libraries that we need locally, like ESLint, Prettier, TypeScript and testing tools need to be declared as dev dependencies. Then we don't need to install all these packages for our production build. But just to clarify here, it all depends how you are serving your production build. If you are building it on your local machine and just deploy somewhere as assets, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. But if you have your project where you want to specifically install your production dependencies, like for example in Node application, it makes a lot of sense to separate your tools. What is the difference between npx and npm? npm is Node Package Manager. We used it for a long time to install our dependencies for Node. NPX, on the other hand, is a package executor, which means it's a CLI tool to execute packages. And it is amazing because it allows you, without installing globally lots of tools, simply execute them through NPX inside your command line. Like for example by using vid inside NPX in order to generate a new React project. Or run prettier through NPX without installing it globally. What is the difference between package JSON and package log JSON? This is an amazing question and a lot of people don't really understand the point. The problem is that inside our package JSON we have all our dependencies with specific versions. But it is not enough because all our dependencies can also have their own dependencies. And that dependencies can be updated. This is why you can't really be sure that when you install packages again in one week, you are installing exactly the same packages. Because even if you locked your dependencies in the package JSON, the dependencies of your dependencies could also be updated, because they were not locked in the package JSON of every single library. This is why we have package log file, which does a snapshot of all our dependencies and their dependencies as a whole file. And then all these versions are locked and we have the full snapshot of what's going on in our application. Then if later we or other developer are installing our dependencies, we will get exactly the same list. And it is extremely important to always have package log file and commit it to git. What is the difference when your console login header component and console login header component when you are calling it? And the main difference here is that first we'll just console log for you a variable, because essentially this is a variable. Another one will console log for you a result of executing this component, which means a component object. What is React Fragment? This is a part of the React which allows us to use nodes inside our React markup that won't be rendered inside DOM tree. And the most popular use case for a lot of people is to wrap to nodes that they want to render inside root with React Fragment, because our JSX markup must have just a single root node. But it is not the only use case. I highly recommend you to use React Fragment as much as possible because the amount of DOM nodes inside your browser will be significantly smaller and your application will be much faster. Because if you have hundreds of thousands of DOM nodes that you are constantly re-rendering on the screen, it will be less performant. What is the purpose of dependency array in use effect? What is the difference when it is used and when it is not used? So first of all, let's talk about dependency array. It is exactly an array of the dependencies of our use effect. If we don't provide it, it means that our use effect will be executed directly after every single render of our component. If you are providing an empty array there, it means that it will be executed only once after first render because we don't have any dependencies. The good approach is to write inside this array 
all dependencies, so all variables of your component that you are using inside use effect. And it is extremely important because then your use effect will be triggered only when these variables were changed. If you don't provide these dependencies, your component may become stale and render some old information. Does the change in one component affect another component's state? This is a great question, but the question is also what kind of component? Are we talking about parent-child or about two siblings? Because typically by default the component will be re-rendered if it is the child of the parent component which is re-rendered. Which means child will be re-rendered when our parent component was re-rendered. This is by default. If you are using things like React Memo, then you can write logic in a way that your child component won't be re-rendered. And additionally to that, if you have two siblings and just one was re-rendered, then another one won't be re-rendered. These components are on the same level, and if the props of another component were not changed, then it won't be re-rendered. What is the use of return in use effect? Inside use effect, it is possible to write a return where we must provide a function, and we typically use this function for cleaning up our application. If you have some listeners or subscriptions that you need to clean, it is a great place to do that, because this function will be called when your component is destroyed. What is the difference between client-side routing and server-side routing? By default in the whole web we have a server-side routing, which means on every single route we are rendering different information by our server. Client-side routing is completely different, we are rendering just a single index HTML on every single route and then with the help of JavaScript on the client side we render different information. And it allows us without page reloading to update information on the page because essentially reloading does not happen, we are still on the same route and we simply replace the markup rendered by JavaScript. Explain the concepts of code splitting and its benefits in React. We have exactly the same benefits in any client framework. We need code splitting to split our one huge bundle in different smaller chunks. Then we can load them with time when we need them. For example, you are going to the home page. You typically need to load just a bundle for this home page and some shared code. You don't really need to load components for login and register page because you don't see these pages yet. It will make your bundle much smaller and your performance faster. And all popular frameworks support this code splitting and inside React we are typically using React Router with Lazy and React Suspense to load code in chunks only when we need that. How does React handle routing and navigation? By default React does not have any routing at all and we typically use React Router DOM for this in order to implement routing in our application. What are Hyoda components in React? I would say this is an extremely old question because we are not using Hyoda components anymore in React. We are typically writing just functions or functional components in React with hooks. Hyoda components is something that we used previously, where we wrapped our class components with other classes in order to implement some shareable logic or give our class additional possibilities. What are controlled and uncontrolled components? And actually this question is a bit tricky because it is not about smart and dumb components. Just to remind you, dumb components are just components which get some props and simply render markup. They don't have any state inside. Smart components, on the other hand, have state inside. But controlled and non-controlled components are different. We typically can create inputs inside our components and most often we are binding every single input to a use state. Then our component is controlled, because essentially React controls all our inputs through use state. Uncontrolled components means that the values inside our inputs are not synced with React. It means that we are using, for example, useRef for them and we read their values later, but essentially React does not watch changes in these components, so our inputs are uncontrolled. Explain the concept of reconciliation in React. And this is the core functionality of React, where React checks 
what changes were done and how exactly our DOM representation or virtual DOM is different from the real markup and what is the best possible way to update our real markup with changes. This process is called reconciliation. If you are interested to prepare for React interview, to pass it for sure, and you want to learn all popular React interview questions, check my React interview course that I will link in the description box below.